Well, hello everyone, it's Susie here from Esoteric Trading Solutions. I hope you're all well, looking after yourself, being kind to yourself, being kind to your family and friends and your beautiful parents and your beautiful animals, your beautiful pussycats, your beautiful dogs and just being kind to people in the world just to make this a better world and a better place. So uh, Crypto Grandma is here today, <laughs> that's for sure. And I'm very proud of my age because we had such a great time in our day. And even though I do come across people uh, in the younger generations that can be quite ageist, I'm just very glad that I've made it. Uh, our generation has a great time. I tell you, it gets better and better as you get older, I've got to tell you. And um, just the experience we have and the knowledge we have, we had a much better time than, than I think the kids are having today, seriously. <laughs> So me and my friends are still wild and we still have a great time. But um, anyway, look, apologies for not coming back too early, but I need to be inspired. I just can't bring out all these videos, uh, YouTubes or whatever, and not be inspired. I just can't bring them out day in, day out. I just don't have that sort of discipline. Um, some people can do it all the time. My life's a bit more varied than that. I do a lot of stuff, so I can't just, you know, plow them out every single day, that's for sure. Um, now today I want to talk about, and I brought up Alistair McLeod uh, many, many times from Gold Money Insights, and this guy honestly really knows his stuff, very, very clever man, very, very clever writer, and uh, obviously has a very strong economic background, financial markets background, um, as well as a statistician and, and, and so forth, but has a lot of experience in, mar in markets, probably well over 30 years as well, but this guy, in far, as far as I'm concerned, is absolutely spot on about where things are going um, in terms of just the economics, uh, particularly in the US and the economics just in terms of a global uh, position. And I actually believe that this is what's going to happen going forward. I, I you know, always believe we're going to have a depression, not a recession, a depression. Uh, the economists are not even talking about depression, but when we see you know, countries where their industrial production's off 25% or, you know, gross domestic product like is off 20 odd percent uh, when it should be off like two or whatever. Uh, this is, you know, figures of a depression, not a recession. And look, the economists, uh, even the politicians aren't even talking about that. This coronavirus has affected 191 countries in the world out of 193. We've had lockdown probably for, for a lot of countries at three months when nothing got done. You know, to me, this is just not, you know, you just can't come back from this. No matter how much you try to ease interest rates, plough money into the system, you know, people are losing their jobs so fast, it's not funny. And even if interest rates are negative, if you don't have any money, you don't have any money, okay? Uh, all of a sudden, you know, unemployment rates have gone up in Australia from 5% to 7.2. You know, if you believe those figures, I actually believe they're a lot higher than that, the unemployment rates. I don't believe them for a second. I think inflation's a lot higher and the unemployment rates are a lot higher. I think, you know, people are really seriously, you know, we are in a depression and I don't believe anything uh, that comes out because I don't think they tell you the truth. Uh, on the ground, the stats that come out don't actually tell you, you know, they don't actually you know, reflect exactly what is on the ground and what's happening, you know, in the, in, in the real people's lives, not the economists that live up in their Arbery Towers, you know, on 150, 200,000 a year or whatever it might be. Excuse me, in a glass of water. Mm. Lemon water, I drink heaps of it. It's really good for your complexion and stops you from ageing, by the way. Not that I'm an ageist, you know, I can't tell people's ages anyway, but Anyway, I don't believe any of the figures that come out from statisticians because what is happening on the ground when you walk around and look around uh, is not a reflection of the reality of what, you know, the statisticians and the government stats are telling us. It's all bunkum. It's all garbology as far as I'm concerned. We do have high inflation in the system. You know, we do have high utility bills. We've got all, you know, everything's costing a fortune. You know, wages have gone backwards over the years, consistently backwards. You know, our, our work environment's getting worse and worse. Working in the corporate arena or anywhere, it's just horrible these days. People don't even, you know, the younger generation, I got I feel sorry for them, Generation Y and the next generation. They don't even get the benefits we used to get. Seriously, it is horrible. And people are nasty and everyone's watching their back and it's just awful. I wouldn't want to be working in a professional environment anymore, particularly uh, in the banks and that, because it'd just be a, a shocker. Banks, everyone's losing their jobs and it's just an absolute shocker. But anyway, let's look at this um, this story that Alistair McLeod talks about. And you know what? It's just so 
spot on to what I believe in. So have a look at it. Uh, as I said, gold money insights, the, cri the crisis goes up again. He talks about the US dollar, US dollar and US dollar, dollar denominated assets uh, absolutely collapsing in the next couple of years. And so that includes the US dollar equity market. He talks about the US dollar collapsing and I believe it will against the yen. Uh, it'll go through 107, uh, 107. In my mind, it could go easily through 100, as you can see by this chart here, 100's here. It's in this big downward channel, sell, sell, sell. And, you know, I believe it could get down easily 77, okay? Easily, if you look at the monthly. Uh, I believe the US dollar will go down. And the reason for that, as we all know, is the US dollar, the US market, the US government just keeps printing more and more debt. Uh, you know, as I said, three or six months ago, whatever it might have been, this thing was a 22 trillion. Now it's a 26 trillion. They keep printing more and more debt against what? Against a balance sheet that is just so overdrawn against assets that are toxic assets against, you know, a public, you know, 320 million people that live in, in America. And literally, you know, we've got 55 million on uh, uh, that are retirees, okay, oh, sorry, 329 million people in America, you know, there's only a hundred, a third of those is uh, taxpayers, income taxpayers, 124 mil, okay, you know, again, uh, 54 million are retired, uh, we've got literally uh, 35 million that are on food stamps, okay, we've got probably half the economy uh, that is basically unemployed and uh, 102 million that are just not in the labor force, okay? And it's getting worse by the minute. Uh, in terms of the debt per citizen, it's nearly 80,000, right? In terms of the debt per taxpayer, it's 211,000. The US government keeps racking up debt, more and more debt, keeps printing more and more money. And this is exactly what we saw before ni the 19 1930s in Germany, okay? The German Reich became worthless because they kept printing more and more money in Germany. Uh, you know, literally, they tried to get the economy to grow, but it wouldn't grow. Uh, they, because they kept printing more and more money, again, the Reich, it's equivalent to selling the Reich. You're putting out more and more supply, okay? The more supply you put out, the more worthless something becomes. It's like having too many apples you know, and apples used to be, you know, two dollars, you know, whatever a bag, and now they're only, you know, twenty cents or something, because there's just too many, too much supply. <coughs> Excuse me, and that's what's happened to the U.S. dollar. It's just there's printing more and more and more, and there's nothing that's backing it. There's nothing behind the printing of money. There's no assets behind it. Okay, and if there is assets behind it, they're toxic, and there's not enough people in the system that actually work, that the government can tax to actually pay off this debt, right? So the more they keep printing money, the more they're selling US dollars, right? And the debt keeps increasing and the balance sheet of the US government just gets worse and worse. Now that's what we, as I said, what we saw in Germany. Coupled with that in Germany, we saw hyperinflation, inflation going through the roof, okay? Now we are seeing that already in life. Now not one economist, talks about inflation going higher and higher. They all say inflation is going down or negative. Well, I've got news for you. The reality is on the street and what's coming out of our pockets and what we need to pay just to stay alive, whether it's gas bills, whether it's electricity bills, whether it's putting food in my mouth, whether it's buying cat food, whether it's, you know, buying cat, you know, worming tablets, you know, $40 a pack. You know, whether it's buying, paying for electricity, anything, the cost of living has gone through the roof in the last 20 years. And it's not, it's not getting any better. You know, a lettuce used to cost about 30 cents in the shop, right, for a lettuce. And I like a lot of lettuce, right? You know, now in the shops in Australia, a lettuce is like $3.50, you know. Fruit is becoming more and more expensive. You know, the items, uh, you know, items that, you know, you need just to live are going up and up and up and up, right? The only thing that used to go down were white goods being imported from China. You know, like a dryer, I've said this before, like a washing machine. Again, how many times to replace those things? But just the everyday 
living that we need is going up and up and up. Not one economist out there talks about inflation rising dramatically. And this is what we've got. You know, rates are negative when inflation is going higher and higher. You know, economic growth has fallen off a cliff. People are getting more and more unemployed. You know, companies are starting to go into liquidation or bankruptcy like Hertz, you know, a lot of the uh, aeroplane companies, whatever. And yet we've got the equity market going up like this and we've got the growth figures going down like that. It's just unsustainable, okay? And this is what Alistair McLeod talks about when you read this. He talks about the debt of the banks. He compares them to 2008 to, to now. And he's saying there will be a banking system collapse worse than we've ever seen in 2008. Now, I was trading and working in professional markets in 2008, and it wasn't pretty. Even 2009, it was terrible, right? Equity market, the Dow got down to 5,800. Now the Dow's at 25,000. You know, don't forget, it nearly got to 30,000. When this coronavirus came out, the Dow was at 18,000. Went all the way up to 29,000. Now it's at 25,000. But when you look at it technically, the thing is going to fall off a cliff. And I've given you that warning before, and it will happen. You know, we have got an old saying in markets up by the steps, down by the elevator, right? And that's an old saying. When it comes down, it comes down fast, right? So what Alistair says, and he's absolutely right, there was a turning point, right? And he talks about March. You know, around this time, right? The 23rd of March, right? You know, gold from the 23rd of March has gone higher and higher and higher. We're still seeing the equity market go higher and higher and higher, up and then up again. And gold has been rising, okay? Uh, again, you know, oil got down to its lows of negative and then up again, you know, and the S&P has been rising ever since. But we've, we're seeing the US trade-weighted index, which is this thing here, the blue one here, coming down, 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 okay? Now, he's basically saying the equity markets are unsustainable, which is what I believe. He's saying the US dollar is unsustainable, which is what I believe. Gold is going to go through the roof, which it is. We're seeing gold, you know, basically hitting, you know, past it's at 1780 US. To me, it looks like it's going to go parabolic, and I've said this before. This thing can break top side to 2,500 US easily. The Chinese are out there buying gold and so are the Russians. When you have currency crisis and we're going to see currency crisis, gold starts going through the roof and that's what we're pretty much seeing, okay? Silver is trying to follow, but the asset to buy is gold and specific cryptocurrencies as well, all right? Like Bitcoin and very specific cryptocurrencies, right? like even XRP, of course, and other specific cryptocurrencies, right? Now, the thing is, uh, business conditions, you know, the economic climate is getting worse and worse. The Fed can, even if they went to negative interest rates, it's not going to help me or you, you know, that lives a normal life. If I don't have cash to pay my mortgage, it doesn't matter, you know, where interest rates are, right? If I'm not working... I can't feed myself or my family. They can cut interest rates as much as they want, but if they're not creating employment where I can get a job or you can get a job, no, no interest rate cutting does nothing. You know, and what we've seen is massive unemployment globally. And you know, like the US, the Australian market is very much a consumer-driven market. No money, honey, no employment, no money, honey, no, no spend you know, on food, no spend on anything, you know, which doesn't generate any other jobs either, right? And everything's stagnant and people lose their, you know, people lose, uh, you know, everything, right? And that's what we're seeing, okay? In Australia with this coronavirus, shops are being closed, people have lost, you know, their jobs. A lot of them have gone home to mum and dad, the younger ones, but shops will never come back. Those people will be unemployed, right? And that will not stop and there will be no money in the system to generate growth or to generate jobs, right? No matter what the, feds, the Fed does or whatever the Australian government does, they can keep printing money, but it's just not going to do anything. It's not creating jobs. And this is exactly what Alistair McLeod talks about, okay? 
he talks about this. He said, the systematic issues are being ignored, right? And I agree with him. You know, the big banks that are too big to fail, like these banks, he talks about the leverage of these banks, which is huge. If we talk about stock gen, 100, you know, 108.7, Deutsche Bank, 74, Barclays, the leverage of their balance sheets is huge, right? And he's talking about derivatives. He's talking about all sorts of things within their balance sheet, okay? He talks about the market cap to the total assets, you know? It just doesn't make sense, right? He's saying where the equity market has got these banks, you know, in terms of even now, right? the banks are way too exposed to collateralise loan obligations, right? Collateralise debt obligations to bad loans, okay? Domestically as well as offshore. Don't forget the German banks, you know, lent uh, to Afri the African economies and the African uh, corporations. So did a lot of the, w uh, so, so a lot of the other Western European banks as well. And basically, when all these loans go bad, you know, there's something not right here where the equity market is pricing these banks even now and where, you know, the, all these bad loans are going to go, right? It's going to bite into the capital of the banks and, you know, the banks are going to bear the risk and, you know, the systematic, systematic issue cannot be ignored. In other words, you get a downgrade in all these banks I mentioned this before, Deutsche Bank used to be a AAA. It's nowhere near a AAA now. They have a very large derivative book in the past. They used to do swaps and everything, right? And we get this contagion effect, okay? One bank affects the other and so forth. We saw that in 08, we saw it in 09. But the thing is, as Alistair says, this US banking system will not survive, right? And I'm with him on this, right? He said... These uh, that are bad news is these SIVs are rated much more highly in the stock market than their Chinese, Japanese, Eurozone, Swiss, and UK competitors. Okay, so in other words, this thing is going to come down like a pack of cards, and it's only a matter of time, right? Only a matter of time. The US keeps pumping money into the system, it's not doing anything, it's not going to save the world. A matter of fact, it's going to cause a feared currency crisis. And we're seeing it with Russia and we're seeing it with um, China. They are actually creating their own cryptocurrency because they know where this is going, right? The Chinese are creating their own one cryptocurrency and they're buying gold. China are buying gold like there's no tomorrow and so is Russia. You know, even individuals are buying gold you can't get gold coins at the moment right gold bullion gold gold you know and that's the problem this banking crisis is coming okay this stock market crisis is coming that's a fact you know there's going to be an absolute you know destruction of u.s assets in terms of the stock market it's unsustainable the bear here is here the black swan is here. And with that, we will see an absolute collapse in the US dollar. That is my firm belief. And that's why the Aussie is performing well. Gold will go up. I believe Bitcoin will go up. Alternative assets will go up like specific cryptocurrency. And basically, you just don't want to be, you know, in corporate bonds, right? Or as I said, the US dollar... Uh, or the credit markets because when this comes, it's going to come fast, okay? He also talks about debt worldwide is going through the roof, amounting to 250 to 300 trillion. The over-the-counter derivatives market, another 560 trillion. We're talking trillions, not millions, right? Uh, options, trillions and trillions, and we're going to see an absolute destruction, right? And it's coming. It's coming. And I guess the coronavirus was the catalyst, right? So have a look at this. Have a read of this. Really, really interesting stuff, guys. Uh, I'm a believer. I've warned you again and again. This is coming, man. And, uh, <coughs> you know, just be safe. You know, you don't want your money. Not This is not financial advice, but 
for me, for me, this is coming and you don't want to be in the US dollar or within the financial markets, particularly the equity market. Anyway, guys, that's enough for me. It's all food for thought. Uh, check out the Alison McLeod um, you know, link and uh, I'll put it on the, um, the YouTube. Uh, press my subscribe button and the little bell to tell you when I'm doing some other videos. I don't do them all the time because I have to be motivated, you know. I've uh, got to be motivated, guys. So um, have a think about it. If you've got any questions, do come back to me. Cheers, guys, and look after yourself. Thank you.